You are listening to 4625 kilohertz. UVB76, the buzzer. Please stand by. <coughs> Wait, what? This thing's on? Oh. <coughs> Greetings, buzzer listeners. You're tuned in to the buzzer overnight. To avoid dead air, we have partnered with the Podcast Producers Guild to bring you the following gift from the United States. The PAA podcast is recommended for mature audiences. <sighs> what is it about introing that show that marks one loose in me? To the loo! Time to go drop the kids off at the pool, you know what I'm saying? What is up, Daves? It's Saturday, and you know what that means. You're watching the number one conservative podcast in Nevada. We are a free speech organization. Check us out on Rumble, BitChute, Odyssey, YouTube, Spotify, Video, Facebook, streaming live right now if you'd like to join in on the conversations, paalive.us. Thank you to the Podcast Producers Guild for making it all possible. Uh... Yeah, we don't talk about that anymore. We do talk about this. We've got to change that in the notes there. Let's go. Let's get right into it. I think I found someone who can make an impact. What do we say? No arm rests. Because we don't rest our arms. That really sounds clunky, doesn't it? Are you ready? Are you ready? Find your state, register to vote, join your local GOP, be a poll worker, promo your events, shop Patriot places, and get agent of change. Go to PatriotImpact.com if you buy anything, any of their merch. The uh, code word is GAVE. G-A-P-E. And we know it was a that someone put in the video. So it's too loud. They had to cover up the copyright music that was already in there. Yeah. So thanks to the Patriot Impact. No armrests because we don't rest our arms. That's what's up. I'm just going to get right into this thing. Um, it's possible that Mike Colian's favorite local podcaster could be joining us since his program has become derailed. So uh, normally I try and get out of his way, but since he might be coming in, we go long. Let him rant, you know what I mean? I can always run down to the fridge and get another one of these and let him take over the show. I already got plans for it and everything. We have a, I don't know, a very circuitous relationship because I watch Ian, I watch Johnny on Ian. Johnny will get on anything except his own show. <laughs> he needs a he needs a network or something. But I don't know. We'd probably just be become an echo chamber. I don't know if Johnny and I agree on everything. Did I? Oh, did I say it was Johnny? Sorry. <coughs> Pardon me. <clears throat> Another spilkacy day. I had my, I wanted to make sure I had my sounds up in case. Uh, That's disgusting. It's okay. I'm locked in a studio. No one's around me. Jesus. So yeah, um, Let's read Mike's comments. Mike Mike had a couple of comments on last week's show. I drank a little bit too much, and I don't necessarily remember what I said. It was a long show, but, you know, you drink those 10%, and that beer was huge. It was wine. I was drinking a bottle of wine in front of you people. It's uncalled for. Just get out of control. Where are the comments? 
I mean, you just, you do it on the fly, right? Comments. Yeah, there it is. Okay. So Mike, Mike Coley and back at it again. Cause I mean, we haven't seen a comment in a while. Oh, here's an interesting one. I didn't notice from five days ago, went to school with Steven. If you only knew how right you are about him. Uh, that, that dude commented on my PAA podcast investigates Steven Silberkraus. Um, golly, that seems like years ago now, but, uh, that's funny. Yeah, I know. I mean, I could read the guy. It's whatever. Six days ago. Oh, wow. Um, somebody named based tube commented one plus one equals three. I can't remember who said that at the debate. Oh, we got a new subscriber. Welcome um, on YouTube, Barack Zilberberg. He's uh, he subscribed to the YouTube channel, which is super cool. I mean, if you want to subscribe to the YouTube channel, that's that's fine. I think we've got like sixty four subs right now. It is what it is. I'm not promoting it, you know, unless you count what I just did. Oh, wow. Okay, yeah, we got a couple of comments from uh, the only conservative concern in the Rhino fleet. Us, someone has to have balls. Rock Silverberg, Nevada Governor, 2022. That's a hashtag. Jesus, Pete. Uh, yeah, so Mike Colian said, have Humpty Dumpty pay him another $6,000 to sing, or 6000 to sing. I believe he's referring to maybe um, Michael McDonald paying Jesse Law $6,000 to sing the national anthem at something. I don't know anything about that. Um, I think Jesse's addressed that before, but Mike, you know, he gets caught on something and just gets wrapped around an axle. Uh, he also said on the same video, master debater, RNC has no power over county GOP business. And uh, I never said they did. What the RNC does have power over are their trademarks that they've registered with the um, trademark place. And they do have lawyers that, that, you know, enforce those trademarks. So, yeah, that's a, that's a dumb fucking comment, Mike. You, I mean, even though I was shit faced partially, you know, I'm not, that's, that's dumb. I never said that the RNC has power over county GOP business, but they do have power over who uses their marks. Um, this is interesting. I don't know if y'all do follow the YouTube channel. I just uploaded a, uh, I, I found some old DVDs in a, one of those things where you put your boot up discs and stuff. And one of them was Deborah on CNN. And that was cool. She dropped a Ron Paul in there. That guy in January of 2008. Well, he was still in it. You know, when CNN wasn't saying his name, I was like, can you get his name in there? And she's like, dare me. Crazy Candidates Carl footage, I found. And Crazy Candidates Dyer footage. So he and I both shot, uh, I think some of the highlights are on, uh, I mean, he's, uh, there's like a guy that's like, I like bikes, and me and Ray Kornfeld and Eddie Hamilton, and, uh, Ken Wagner. And then some of us on this one. I cut a heel promo on this. I watched this. This is the most cringy shit I will ever, ever watch. Hey, here's a pro tip. If you want to transfer something from a DVD that you can play on your computer, uh, you have to take it somewhere and have them transfer it to digital. But if you've got Zoom uh, and you own it, you know what I mean? It's not like you're burning somebody else's crap. These are DVDs that I burned of, of videos that I shot. Uh, just open up your Zoom, turn off your camera, turn off your mic, hit share screen. Do not turn on your audio, but make sure you share the audio from the share screen. Share audio as well. Do not optimize it for clips. For some reason, that, that that jacked it up for video clip. Maybe you can, but I couldn't. But um, just play it over a closed Zoom meeting that you're recording on your div on your computer, and use that recording. Clean it up however you want. Edit it. I didn't even bother. I just put it. I just put it straight up. And easy cheesy. No having to pay for it or anything like that. If you got hours of video, maybe that'd be a problem. If you has have a subscription to Zoom, I mean, you could just, you know, you could record it, play it, 
stream it to your family or something like that. If you got an old video of your great granddad saying racist stuff that you want to share with, you know, the whole whole crew, then you know, you just stream it on Zoom, let everybody watch, but don't let them, you know, you don't want to see their faces. Unless you want to see them reacting to great grandpa saying racist stuff, but whatever. Should you list your party in your campaign information? By the way, Johnny Brew, if you want to jump in, paalive.us. I know you were talking about it. What time is it now? Wouldn't it be fucked up? I haven't even looked at the comments. If everybody's like, yep, can't hear you, dude. It's happened before. Oh, okay, cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, the Johnny Brew show live at 7. Oh, yeah, he's going to jump in at 7. Sweet. Is that, I don't know if that means that he's going live at 7. He'll clarify. But yeah, we can go till 7 until Johnny's ready to jump in. Talk about whatever he wants to talk about. Um, yeah, so I got these old DVDs. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to upload the rest of them. I watched the one of me running for Congress. I was chewing gum. I cut, I cut a heel promo is what I did. And uh, it was cringy as shit. <laughs> I'm not gonna lie. I can't wait to. Uh, I can't wait to to put it up for everybody to see. All right, let's see. You are listening to the PAA podcast, Juggalo Patriots. There you go. So. Um, when, when I was running for office in 2008, I was told by someone to, uh, in, my, in my campaign flyers and, and whatnot, to always use my party. That it seems like I'm being um, underhanded if, I, if I'm not out there with what party I'm running in. People that are in the know, they're not tricked. If you, you know, hide it, they're going to, okay, you're probably somebody who's trying to pander and I mean there's a certain amount of people in the middle that swing elections but they want to know whether you're a Republican or a Democrat that's that's what we think that's that's the consensus those of us that have been, run for office and and had professionals advise us you got you got to put it out there and you know some people are going to reject you on that but if you're being shady about it then you gotta, um, uh, you gotta spin it. You know what I mean. You gotta, you gotta say, well, I'm, I'm trying to cater to everybody. My campaign is open to everyone. I don't, I'm not represented by a color, red, blue, green, purple, uh, or or any colors of the rainbow individually. I, you know, I'm, I'm a politician for all the people, but I'm running as a Republican. Um, you know. I hope that works out for you, but it's it's something that a discussion I had with a candidate who's thankfully running down ballot. So it's a, I mean it's, you know I don't I don't understand if these candidates think they're pandering or or, or if you know if they're tr tricking people if they think they're tricking people. Well, you know oh I I liked her before I knew she was a Republican so now I like her, but. Um, yeah, J Jennifer Fauzy, Fauzy is trying to be everything to everyone. I tweeted that song to her. Ken Minster liked it. Um, I saw a post on her campaign site, and I was like, I recognize those graphics. And I, I posted this on, on Facebook. But I, I'm, oh, no, I'm not fairly sure. I, I went on her website. And I clicked on the copyright banner on the bottom and it went to loving, living in Vegas.com, which no, it went to LVNV, LV.com. Two of the failed domains that Sherman has used for his love and living in Vegas, which I, I've not been watching so much of. It's very repetitive. Um, whereas it never gets old watching me drink beer and tea and, and shit on people. All Sherman does is promote his magazine anymore. And I mean, Jesus Christ.
Christ, it's 66 pages, 99 if you get the bonus uh, online thing, whatever. And he's having some kind of launch party coming up. The people in the cover, I don't even know, is like, it, it, okay, Sherman's gimmick is weird. Uh, like, he has a lot of B-roll that I think you're supposed to pay for, or maybe he does pay for it, like through a service. You can recognize it. And even though his show is called Living in Vegas, the B-roll is not Vegas B-roll, except for the one scene of him driving under that new archway by the Strat. And, yeah, Sherman has some kind of hard-on for the Strat, too, because I he built... Uh, Jennifer Fauzy's website, Fauzy, who knows if I'm saying it right. Uh, And she's running for Senate 8, I believe. But Sherman built her website. Uh, Sherman's only going to work for Republicans, I assume. Even though Sherman doesn't mind. You know what? (coughs) I'm sure Sherman doesn't pay for the stuff that he's using, the B-roll that he's using, even though that stuff looks like it's supposed to be licensed, because he was okay with stealing Donald Trump's... uh, intellectual property during the previous administration, during the Sage Deck administration, he's one of the things that, one of the catalysts of this whole PAA podcast starting is one of the things that really gave us something to talk about because he was a, I don't know, he was something on the board and there and, and he thought that it was okay. He gave me one of these when I was recording who was okay with it when we had a vote on it. He was... He was super okay with it. So I don't want to cast aspersions on Jennifer just because Sherman's doing her website. But, yeah. It is your fault. I mean, it is Sherman's fault. And he's not involved in the party anymore, but at least he's... Man, I hope he's not charging people. I hope he's not. Because it did have a different business name than S. Ray Media. It's a lot of grifters in the in the party. There's a lot of people that show up and they just go, how can I make money off of this? Uh, I mean, I don't make any money. I don't know if Veterans in Politics makes any money off of their gimmick or if Rob Lauer makes any money off of his gimmick or if Michelle Mortensen's making any money off her thing. I imagine, I mean, Johnny Brew's stuff might be a write-off because he's already a businessman and he, he does promote his business Maybe maybe some of this stuff's a write-off. PA, uh, I don't know. Uh, Podcast Producers Guild and PAA haven't spent a whole hell of a lot to where we need to worry about funding the thing. And, uh, I mean, it's, at, at this rate, it could go on forever. <laughs> Pretty much. It doesn't take much. So, uh, oh, yeah, here. Um do we want to promote First Friday? I have two things that promote First Friday now. This incredibly loud crap that David Washorn made. Nevada Grand Ole Parte First Friday. Hosted by Ahern Hotel and Convention Center. The first Friday of every month. See NevadaGOP.org for more info. Bring a friend. Bring a family member. Bring someone under 40. Do it. Do it. And then I, I I had some stingers made. Here, I got a challenge. I'm going to send this out privately to some people. Michelle Mortensen, if you want this, I want you to hit up this person on Fiverr. If you've already got production and you don't care, then don't do it. But I'm going to send a link to Ian. I'm going to send a link. I already sent a link to Jesse. I'm going to send it to Johnny Brew. And I'm going to have everybody hit up this person on Fiverr and spend $7.28 and have five stingers made. So that, you know, so that we can play, because I, you know, I have one I gave to Jesse. Barely the news. So with five stingers, Ian could could do um, what's Jesse's top five, right? Jesse's top five. And uh, I, I know none of you people watch Jesse's podcast, so I'll, I'll go ahead and tell you. I had a, um, I, I, a cheesy idea for, like, because... I don't like what Ian did. Sorry, I don't. I don't mean to critique somebody else's work, but I don't like Ian's Jesse's top five thing. But it does have an '80s vibe to it. But go right on the nose with a Rick Springfield parody. You know, I wish that I had Jesse's top five. Just shoehorn it in there. Where can I find a list like that 
or something. You know what I mean? And and then stingers like this. Barely the news. And I know that David Washorn blew that, but I'm, what I'm saying is, I got you got five of these, and they 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 allow you to say a lot more than just that one thing. I'm gonna send the link to those guys later, Michelle, if you want some of these too. Like, I mean, this is good. You are listening to the PAA podcast. Sick, right? I got five of those for five bucks, and I mean, like, they give you way more words than what I used. I just wanted, I wanted tight little stuff like that. Juggalo Patriots. But the reason I bring it up is because of this one, the second one. Can someone tell me when First Friday is? There you go. Uh, there's a group called the Las Vegas Conservative Town Hall Group. Various spellings on the word town hall. Uh, you can look it up on how to spell. I believe it's two words, both capitalized. Maybe, maybe I'm wrong. Maybe you know, it, it could it could go either way. But the head of that organization, and and I've talked about him before because I've been to some of their cool little oh sorry some of their cool little things at the Indian restaurant there. That one time I took I took Mrs. Patriot there, and, and we went and had dinner right next door to where they were doing a candidate meet and greet for the county party. But but they've they've moved up. They've gotten bigger, and they've moved into the Ahern. Uh, which is awesome. The Ahern Freedom Hotel um, is big enough to host their meetings, it's barely big enough to host some of our meetings now. We're going to have to move into some bigger spaces, some of the county party meetings, the real county party meetings. But uh, Jim Small moved his group into the Ahern Freedom Hotel and Convention Center, and I got word that Jim is telling people, this could be a rumor. I don't know. Do we have anything to, here, let's, you want to do, a, yeah, maybe, I don't know. Completely conjecture. I have heard, I made this up. I made this up. But. Uh, TK or Lisa Mayo, congratulations on running for office. You're both, if you're part of that Carrie Buck crew, get fucked. But uh, do me a favor, TK, tell uh, Jim Small that I was talking shit. Apparently, what I'm making up is that Jim Hall is the, 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 the chair of this large, very large Las Vegas conservative group is going to decide which Clark County Republican Party he's going to back, which one he's going to endorse as his group, as, as to, to his group, based on January 18th, coming up, Tuesday. we got a call to meeting from both organizations. We've got... Uh, you know, this this week there was uh, the judge, Judge um, uh, Christ. What judge was it? Um, judge Johnson. She said, um, no, my original order stands, Carrie, uh, which is a win for the CCRP. Don't even ask me how to how to figure that out. Let's, uh, yeah, let's do the CCRCC versus Zoom Club. Decided by the attendance on January 18th at each organization's respective central committee meeting, um, the actual endorsed by the state, by the RNC, elected correctly through Robert's Rules of Order and, and, and uh, Parliamentary Procedure, following the rules and bylaws of the party as as known by anybody that's got a fucking brain um we'll be meeting at the Ahern Freedom Hotel on the 18th Tuesday I think it's 6 registration probably starts as soon as they can start firing them up if you're a member you're getting an email that has your QR code if you're not uh still show up it's just easy to register no fees we don't charge fees at the real party 
Uh, over at the Orleans, there's going to be an alternative meeting for people that are living in an alternative reality. The chairwoman of Delusion will be holding an, a meeting with uh, her little shithead minions, Ed Gonzalez and Steven Silverkraus, if they even have the fucking rocks to show up. I mean, these people are fucked. Who knows what's going to happen? Uh, you know, like they could be served, they could be booed out of the building. Some of the people that are were involved with them have started showing back up at Republican Party legit events, and we're not letting them off the hook. What were you thinking? Turns out some of them might be autistic. But Jim's not autistic, is he? He does realize that the RNC sent a cease and desist to Kerry Buck, saying that you need to stop using uh, the elephant, uh, the GOP, and stop collecting money under our name. And they, they sent out a fundraiser with their new logo that linked to the Clark GOP website with their old logo. They said, fuck you, Rona McDaniel, Romney. All three of your fucking names. Fuck them all. That's what they said. They said, fuck you, RNC. You want to post this clip? At RNC. At iCoachEducators said, fuck you, RNC. Because they just kept on using your shit. They, they removed one layer of bullshit. And they made the dumbest fucking logo. Can I pull that logo up? This logo is trash. I mean, people were, people were shredding it. Uh, where is it? Knock this garbage off now. Yeah. It's so hard to pull other shit up, you know, while I'm doing this. It, it, it's really clunky. Let me, oh, fuck, I don't even want to do it. You know, play along at home. Anyway, I, I could describe it because people listen to this as a podcast, but uh, it's got the U.S. flag behind a, a circle with Nevada covering it. So it, it kind of, and Nevada is just red, but Clark County's gold. It, it's kind of, I mean, you know, maybe it indicates where uh, Clark is on the map, but it's got a banner that doesn't look like the Battle Born banner on our flag, but it says Battle Born. And, and yeah, it just looks like we're being oppressed by the United States. It's, 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 it's straight shit. Um, yeah, there's a vi there's a lot of good shit on the. I forget to put this stuff up. Like, can you hear this? Let's see. Hang on, Carrie. Carrie seemed unhinged, and I, I do. Hello, I'm Senator Carrie Buck, chair of the Clark County Republican Party. I would like to implore all Republicans out there to start getting involved. We really are excited about all the different things that we are doing at the Clark County Republican Party. We are growing in each precinct, a precinct captain and assistance to really improve our grassroots program. We're looking for candidates in various races, as well as growing our membership of our party. Our first general meeting of the new year, 2022, is uh, this January 18th at seven o'clock. I look forward to seeing you all there. Please come. We're inviting all new members and all of our Republican community to please come out and join us. We also would like for our non-major friends and independents who lean conservatively, please come and join us in the fight to take back our state, to take back our freedoms. We are truly in this fight together. Thank you so much. Good job, Carrie. Uh, the only edits on this that were made was the zoom and the washing out the color, obviously, to make her look more insane, but the uh, audio is completely unaltered. Um, I don't know what... I'm not real familiar with dope, like uh, legal dope, like Adderall and, and shit like that. I, I mean, weed... If is she does she smoke weed? Like, does she get fucking stupid high and then do a podcast and, you know, drink beer and stuff? And because 
I don't know, man. She's fucking... I wonder how many t- takes that took. All right, cool. Yeah, Johnny clarified. He's coming on here around 7. So that's cool. <coughs> We're going to change the whole background in the studio for uh, for Johnny once, once he shows up. So, yeah, uh, back to it. Jim is going to decide which organization he will throw his support behind based on the turnout at these two meetings um even even if that means that you pick the right one i mean somebody could fucking inflate their numbers you know what i mean or whatever i'm sure there'll be spies in both rooms but that's a dumb fucking thing to say dude you just lost i mean like we know dave gibbs is a dirtbag you know he'll play all sides and shit but has he come out for either side i haven't seen him at either meeting um, I, I don't know if his people have come to any, I mean, like Republican club, they're a whole different animal. So who do they back? Did they, did they have a meeting and decide not to back anybody and to stay out of this? Cause they're the real party. I don't know. It's strange, but for Jim to do this, for Jim to lend them any legitimacy after the RNC has already said we need you to stop using our, our trademarks. It's just ludicrous. Like, the the town hall is a fucking joke now. TK, tell Jim Small I said the town hall is a fucking joke because of him. Because he said that whichever organization turns out more people is the winner in his eyes. That's great. If Kerry's organization turns out more people, then fucking awesome. But I would definitely check her numbers or check the people because... Anybody that knows what the fuck's going on. I mean, only the nerds show up to the Central Committee. You got two competing Central Committee meetings? You don't think the fucking nerds know which one is the real one? I mean, if you want to sow dissent, if you want to be a part of Kerry Buck's bullshit and and steal the party and get your fucking name on that shit, Jenna Waltho, then by all means. But if you're looking to get involved and get Republicans elected then you got to get the fuck away from that clown because Carrie Buck came out of fucking nowhere like a wrecking ball. And and that's what she is, man. She's a wrecking ball. Like something is fucking wrong with her mentally. And these people show up, these, you know, there's mentally ill people, their egos drive them into this and then something just takes over the pills, the booze, uh, the sex. I don't know, but it, it fucks some of these people's heads up. And Carrie has obviously lost the script. I don't know why. I mean, I, you can go back and watch my old interview when we, when her and I were on good terms. She and I were on good terms. When we were on good terms. And I asked her, why would you do this? Aren't there... I God, I hope I asked her. I was, I was just so enamored during the interview. I may not have or even followed up when she... But anyway, she answers the questions she wants to answer and doesn't answer the ones you ask necessarily. Because there's fundraising conflicts that are still a problem. And she doesn't... Uh, She's, you know, she just, whatever. The, the RNC said no, but la, la, la. It's, the sky in her world is not the same color as the sky in the rest of our worlds. What I got? What else I got in these notes? I might run out of notes. That'd be fucking funny. NRCC winter meeting is in Las Vegas. Did I mention that? I don't know. I don't even know what date it is. Let's see. Um, I should have. See, I've, I've. I've put this forward before. If if I can sit down and and record a five minute video of, of someone from an old CNN interview, or I can play around with video. If you got an organization, you could take a half an hour or an hour. You could make a cute little card with music for something you want to promote. <coughs> Excuse me, something that. Uh, is coming up, an event coming up, uh, NRCC winter meeting, for example. Uh, have, have one of your people put together a little thing, NRCC winter meeting, the chairman of the state party, perhaps, and I'll run it leading up to this because I have no idea when the date is, but I don't want to look it up. You know what I mean? I don't feel like doing the work. And, and I feel bad-ish, not really. I got a lot going on. Uh, what I'm offering is a platform to however many people watch for the party, candidates, anybody, any candidate 
that wants to promote their campaign and wants to cut a little 30 second video, I'll play it every week, just like I do here. Let's, let's illustrate. Let's illustrate. I think I found someone who can make an impact. No armrest because we don't rest our arms. ThePatriotImpact.com Go to ThePatriotImpact.com Use the code word Dave, password, Dave, uh, username, Dave, you know, the discount code, Dave. And you get some percentages off of the merch that's on there. If you got ev events you want to share, share them with me, I'll share them with them. Then they get double promoted. See, what I'm saying is if Joey Gilbert cut a video, if Barack Zilberberg cut a video and said, hey, I'm going to be at such and such, come see me. A 30 second, you know, don't don't overdo it. You know what I mean? It's, but I'm this is what I'm here for. This we're here for the content. So if you got something that you'd like to put out there. I would I would pop for that. Honestly, I'd lose my shit if somebody, you know, one of the candidates for governor, lieutenant governor, any office hit up paalive.us and came on here live and, you know, wanted to um, go toe to toe. I'm a pushover. You've seen my interviews, whatever. You know, I'm, I, as soon as you come on here, we're, we're, we're friends, right? You know, I don't like to be confronted about my bullshit. I mean, unless TK or, or Mike Colian called in, then I'd roast the shit out of them or Sherman. Yeah, I mean, right. You know what? If we're starting off in a neutral place, I've never met you. Barack, I mean, you come on. I'm going to ask you about the video. You're a, you're a subscriber now, Barack Zilberberg. Yeah. I mean, you got to admit you're an eccentric character. And it turns out that Barack has California license plates on his, his G-Wagon. Um, I don't know. See, I hate looking shit up. I, I really, David Wesshorn just falls asleep in the corner over there some, sometimes. But it, I don't know where I saw it. I, I shared it. So here, let's let's look. You know, is it worth a look? Can we get on Instagram really fast? Because that's that's where the um, that's where the social media team has really been fucking killing it. Because I ain't got no time for that shit. But apparently the the um, social media team over there at the Podcast Producers Guild, they just fucking, they grind. They grind hard. All right, so let's see what we've been posting. Because whenever I have an idea, they seem to come up with a post for it. Which one was I looking for? All right, well, that ain't it. That ain't it, Chief. Son of a bitch. Yeah, whatever. Anyway, Barack. Hey, let's... Fuck, man. Where did they share that? I can't remember if it was shared on Facebook. Barack has California plates. It's it's quite embarrassing. He has a picture on his Instagram or on his social media somewhere that says, Barack Zilberberg for uh, Nevada governor. And then his license plates are California plates. And, and that's not cool. That's weird. Um... Uh, yeah, Fiori, CRT, or no. You know what's funny is, um, I like, yeah, I read uh, Sarah Ashton Cirillo's political dot tips. I read, I read the articles there, mostly because uh, whenever Sarah thinks that I might like one, she'll send me the link. But, uh, oh, shit. Oh, well, that's cool. Well, that just leads right into my next story. Uh, cool. This is neat. I want to tell you about a guy. Yeah, okay. The story was originally Michelle Fiore, CRT or no. So apparently at one time, she before she was against CRT, she was for it. Exclusive Michelle Fiore leads way in appointing CRT something. But what I wanted to talk about was Michelle Fiore, and then I was going to talk about this guy that I met back in 2007, 2008, when I was first involved in the Ron Paul movement. Uh, as a gentleman who served in the Army, 
I want to say one of the airborne units, 82nd or 10, you know, 101st, one of the good ones. But he was a constitutional attorney. And at a time when everybody was starting little organizations, um, some of us were starting, you know, podcasts because we were uh, unfulfilled actors. Some of us were forming uh, constitutional groups that were pro-gun and pro our constitutional oath. I wasn't a big group former. People didn't really rally around someone like me. I don't know. I don't have that really dynamic personality, but Stuart does. Stuart Rhodes. Uh, formed the Oath Keepers. I was right there. I probably could have joined if I wanted to go in that route instead of being a, a wise ass in his mom's basement with a camera and a computer and a Zoom account. But... I didn't. I, 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 I chose, yeah, I chose the, the gentler path. Stuart and his group, kind of, you know, the paramilitary kind of group. The thing is, these things, like Stuart's the real deal, right? He's a constitutional attorney, and he is uh, a military veteran. I mean, he understands very much the, the line. And uh, they were involved with the Bundy Ranch situation. They were involved with the thing up in Oregon where Roy Finnicum, I believe his name was, uh, was uh, murdered by the feds. And um, I worry that people that want to take the organization in a direction that Stuart didn't really want it to go have taken over. But Stuart has been, let's say, let's read, uh, let's read. The lady is an oath keeper. Document shows Nevada's Michelle Fiore consummated relationship with Val. While political... Why, while Politico famously intoned that the lady is a Trump in a story about Michelle Fiore, political tips can now report that a 2015 study identified the current Las Vegas City Councilwoman and Nevada Republican gubernatorial hopeful as something else as well. A paper titled Going to Extremes, issued by the Center for Western Priorities, states Fiore has taken the Oath Keeper vow. Um, just off the top of my head, here's the thing. Uh... The Oath Keepers was an organization whose main tenet was there are those of us who took an oath to uphold and defend the Constitution against all enemies, foreign and domestic. So that would be police officers, military, uh, whatever. We never, we never decided to untake that oath. I wasn't read out on that. Every military clearance that I had, I was read out on and I wasn't allowed to speak about. But... My oath was never rescinded. So by joining this group, you're affirming that you're going to keep your oath to defend the Constitution against all enemies, foreign and domestic. Uh, furthermore, let's back to the story. Furthermore, a screenshot from the website, MOLand.com, features for you with the recently indicted Stuart Rhodes at an event hailed as an Oath Keepers renewal ceremony. So there you go. Every once in a while, you just show up and renew your oath. Uh, April 19th, 2014. So that would have been at the Bundy Ranch, Oath Keepers Renewal Ceremony, Bundy Ranch, Nevada, Saturday, April 19th, 2014. So if that was going on, on during the Bundy Ranch standoff, April 19th is Patriot Day. Um, it's uh, the Lexington and Concord, I believe. Uh, the shot heard around the world, perhaps, from the revolution. Um I don't remember what year, but, and also because of, I, they changed it to Patriots Day. No, Patriots Day is 9-11. Patriot Day is April 19th. My birthday. Uh, so, and an infographic taken from a detailed 2016 article in the High Country News examined Fiori's connections to multiple extremist groups, once again showing her direct connection to Rhodes, the alleged January 6th insurrectionist leader. So what Rhodes is accused of from just a small clip that I saw, Stuart Rhodes is accused of bringing guns to Virginia and uh, keeping them in their hotel room in Virginia for saying that we're possibly in a civil war. Uh, I, I've heard this brought up on like Tim Pool that when you look at a civil war, like say for the American Civil War, you say, okay, it's Fort Sumter. That's the place that it kicked off, right? That's where people would say, oh, that's, now we're at war because that's when it was declared. But when you look prior to that, there are steps that happen that 
were actually acts of war. So I think what Stuart is intoning is that there's already a war. So I, I don't know, maybe they expected stuff to pop off. They're allowed to bring guns to a hotel room in Virginia. And then they said that he was in contact, uh, in communication with people inside the, the uh, Capitol. So here's the weird thing. It seems like to me, the Stuart that I knew back then would have told those people to get the fuck out of there. Uh, he didn't go in and, I mean, they were waiting just in case something happened. But what in the fuck has happened? Let me Google a picture of my man. I saw it on the news. I will show this. Yeah, holy cow, man. Th- this motherfucker became a super villain. Here, I'll pull up a... Do a share. Share screen. So there, there's a there's a Google image search. I wonder. Because I stack these stupid things up. The production just gets clunky as shit. Am I writing the good I'm writing the way of the good one? So there's Stuart, right? He's got the goatee, eye patch, glasses. Oath Keeper, hat. I mean, I like the dude. Um, we're not homies or anything like that. I met him at a few things, and, you know, he took a different path than I did. I, I decided to run for office and just be a fucking jack wagon clown, turn on a camera and, and make, you know, make fun of people. This crap needs to stop. And, you know, Stuart... You are listening to the PAA Podcast. Juggalo Patriots. Sorry, contractually obligated. Um, Yeah, Stuart chose to form some sort of paramilitary Boy Scout troop. And Michelle Fiore, uh, the thing is, when she went to the Bundy Ranch, these folks that live in uh, between here and Mesquite, uh, they're cattle people. Michelle didn't, I don't think she represented, I don't know if she represented that area, but she inserts herself into stuff, um, to help. She helped with the Oregon situation because, you know, there was some, it, 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 whenever a right wing, quote unquote, right wing extremist group gets pinned up in a cabin somewhere, it's nice to have somebody that's high profile like Michelle to defuse the situation. I know Roy Finnicum got killed up there in Oregon, but the stuff over there in Bunkerville could have gone way worse. And, you know, Michelle's not there. Well, she's there to get the shine and she's there to help. I hope. Um, let's see. What else do we say about, <coughs> about Michelle? I mean, see, the thing is, Oath Keepers is from here. Stewart is from here. He was already established in 08. So Michelle came around in 2010 of course she's going to run into Stuart. He had influence. Despite her intense long-term relationship with Rhodes and the Oath Keepers, Fiore was not at the Capitol with them in early January of 2021. Instead of choosing to spend her time in posh Amelia Island with the Republican National Committee, an event at which the New York Times reported on her attire. Okay. So she was probably there as a committee woman uh, at some sort of RNC. Yeah. She was at the RNC. All right. I didn't know. So that's cool. That see, I, I read uh, Sarah Cirillo's articles, and people get upset, man. People get mad. Hmm. That's hilarious. I'm gonna sit here and stare at the. F- <laughs> I'm out of notes. Let's go through some of the shit we've posted this week. Johnny Brew wants to jump on at 7. So I got to milk the next 10 minutes. And this, Unless anybody else wants to jump on, paalive.us. Did I fuck up the link? I'm pretty sure I did it. I'm sh- pretty sure uh, David Washorn updated the link. All right, so let's see what PAA Podcast has been sharing on the social media.
Oh, okay. Yeah. Just just share the screen. Fuck it. <laughs> Man, it's nuts how I can't... Can I, like, drag this fucking bar out of the way? If I drag it over here? Get rid of all these. You know what I'm saying? There we go. Yeah, let's look at some of PAA's social media posts. Gravit TV's looking for interns. Uh, oh, man. Michelle was talking about having... Michelle Mortensen was talking about having Johnny and I on. But uh, I got a new schedule. Everybody's got new schedules. We'll see if that if that happens. It would be nice to be in studio on somebody's professional show, I suppose. You know, everybody promote everybody's thing, I guess. Even though nobody's supposed to watch my thing. This is just supposed to be for my grandkids one day to watch. And Mike Colian. It's for Mike Colian to watch. And TK. That's it. Um... Yeah, that was that's what we're doing right now. P A A live. Yeah, yeah. And then uh, there's Johnny Bruce post. Yeah, there's the thing about Jennifer. See, I kind of like. Oh yeah, this was cool. Now I've already heard this debunked, but I I shan't be reporting on that. I won't be I won't be hearing it. Uh, for those of you that are going to the meeting, holy shit! What am I doing? We have a meeting on Tuesday, and we have we have the uh, the call to meeting. There's some bylaws changes and stuff we need to look at. But anyway, um, the, the, the Coalition for Conservative and Republican... Man, come on. What are we doing? I mean, if we're not going to do it right, you know what I mean? Coalition for Conservative and Republican Cannabis Consumers is meeting Tuesday night... Hey, new rules. Bring your own fucking joint, your own smoking gimmick or whatever. Nobody's passing shit around. I wouldn't even want to fucking... You know you can do that chum thing where you put the put the joint here and then you... Like that. I don't even want to do that. I don't want your nasty joint in my hand. None of you people. Don't touch me at the meeting. Uh, I'm going to wear my mask. Because uh, cause reasons... You know what I'm saying? On Tuesday? So. But this thing says that researchers say cannabis compounds might prevent you know what. But apparently it's already been debunked. Don't give a shit about the debunking part. Smoke that shit. Get rid of that. Get rid of that fucking uh, virus. And as Natalie said, wonder what, how Stravos feels about this. Stravos can bite my fucking bag. Um, yeah, Sherelle Mendenhall, she's posting stuff. She's Everybody's got some fucking solutions for the, uh, the five-day pause, and this is Michelle's. She's saying on Friday and Tuesday you can meet at her church and bring your kids to share infection, uh, to share a day of infection with volunteers and tutors. T-U-D-O-R, I'm sorry, instruction, a day of instruction, for a couple of days of instruction. Tutors, T oh, there's Johnny Brew. T-U-D-O-R-S, oh, hold on one sec, let's do this. Give me one sec. All right, oh, why are you sideways? Uh, to share a day of infection with all years All right, there you go. I got to do... I gotta fix something now. Tutors, yeah. Wow, you're listening to the delay, huh? Can you hear me? I can hear you. All I right. I can hear you too. Hold on one second. I have to I have to fix something here. Safe driving mode. Oh, you're in safe driving mode? That's good. Yeah, you don't want to... No. All right, where is it? 
I'm going to call in from the other phone. Oh, okay, cool. No worries. I have a thing to do here. I got it on standby for those that are watching on video. Oh, this is so fucking clunky. Where did it go? Dude, are you kidding me? I thought I added it. I did add it. Where is it? This is straight bullshit. Oh, there it is. Got it. Oh, my God. Let's get back to it. My dog is sitting outside my door just ah, whining. There we go. You're just in time for the Johnny Brew Show. <laughs> He's still sideways. What do you have to like rotate your laptop to do that? No, I'm on my oh. cell phone. Ah, and I don't gotcha. understand. I used to be able to like see myself and now yeah. I see your screen. Are you showing Gmail? Yeah, no, I was showing Facebook right now. Is it showing something else? No, it should just be Facebook. No, I was it's showing my emails. I don't understand. I that's... just said join with video and instead of looking at myself, I'm looking at my email here. Well, that's weird. All I see on my end is you. And not me. I got. <laughs> oh, I see myself on the TV. There you go. Why, I don't know why there's no like picture of myself on here. Yeah, I don't know. Hmm. Yeah. Okay. Zoom. Zoom is just shit. <laughs> well, no, it's always worked fine before. I'm just trying to make it so I got the right headspace and everything. Yeah. There is a gimmick on here where it can set up both of us on the same screen, and I don't know. I like your background, man. That's hot. Where'd Isn't you that cool? The, that's a I, cool eagle, man. Yeah. With olive branch and the arrow. Oh, it's my logo. <laughs> wow. Yeah, right? That's good stuff. Yeah. Look, Constitution and the flag in the background. Very cool stuff. There you go. In case you want to share a video or anything like that, I made you the co-host. Thanks. Yeah. I could barely get my face on the screen, so I gotcha. think I look now. Yeah. So I was just I was just going through here and and going through stuff that I did uh, that I that that we posted. Oh Christ! The school board meeting. I didn't even bother. I mean, I I don't feel like I bothered. Hey, what I miss besides the bus schedule? I don't know. It didn't really seem all that contentious for once. Um, uh, you know, people had people weighed in on what they thought they should do with the f five days off. Well, but... whatever. You know, schools never should have ever, ever, ever closed until you have an emergency like we had this week. I mean, even it's hit my house. It's hit every single house in Las Vegas. It hit my studio. And, um, you know, right now is the time that it should be closed. But closing it for the past year and a half, that whole thing that they did. Yeah. You know, the problem, you know, even when I'm talking about this pandemic. What would we do if there was a real pandemic? Like, people were, like, dropping dead and stuff. And we, I mean, would we be even more tyrannical? I don't know how we could be even more tyrannical than we were over something that, you know, is not the flu, but there's nothing else to compare it to. You can't compare this to the Asian uh, flu or smallpox or polio. It's like a flu, but five times as bad. Yeah. Now way 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 worse than the flu that doesn't mean you can't compare it to that yeah i i mean people are tripping that like uh so i substituted for two days and then how'd it go well i mean it was great but then you know all of a sudden one of my kids who i don't even see you know, it's a teenager find out you know my wife says oh he's positive i gotta bring you in to get a test so i go okay so i, I tell my principal go hey i just found out you know, this kid that lives in my house is uh, is positive. Uh, so obviously I can't be here tomorrow or what. And she goes, oh, you haven't read your email. And I go, no. And she says, OK, well, they're closing Friday. They're closing Tuesday. T staff development, teacher work day, whatever. I go, oh, well, great. I'll see you Wednesday probably. We, we did all the paperwork. We did all the figuring. Yeah, see you on Wednesday the 19th. I've had uh, – so I went and got a test. Positive. I feel oh, fine. Positive. Yeah, I feel fine. Um, but 
yeah, I mean, it's, you know, you got to wait five days. So, you know, I mean, it is what it is. Some people are suffering like it's the flu and, and feeling like ass. And some people are, are walking right through it this time. I don't, that's, yeah, it's, I teach and I was told to stay home till Thursday. You know, just because of my producer, you know, just because I ca- yeah, came in contact with my producer, I got to wait five days to make sure I'm allowed to, you know, be on property. Yeah. Oh, and they, when they called me, they, they were asking me like, oh, so you got it from your son? I'm like, hey, take it easy now. I don't know who I got it from. Like, right. you know, relax. But I mean, like all of a sudden the next day I found out nine teachers also, you know, were out because everybody got exposed because they're all, they all right. have kids in different schools and stuff and like he, that. He says everybody's going to get it. Yeah. Or, or be, be around somebody. Cause you got to admit that you're around somebody. You don't want to hide that. You don't want to be the guy that's, you know, spreading it on purpose. Right. But once Fauci goes on live TV and says, everybody's going to get this. Why we, why are there any mask mandates? I mean, if everybody's going to get it, he didn't say, unless you're triple masked yeah. and triple vaxxed with the face shield and you quarantine <laughs> He, even those people, according to Fauci, are going to get it. Yeah. Well, they were asking me, like, who else have you had contact with? And I'm like, dude, I don't touch anybody. Like, I wear a mask. They're like, you know, when were you around somebody without a mask? I'm like, stop. Like, are you kidding me? What? I'm not trying to get in trouble. I just left a job where I wasn't, like, when we walked into a casino or a gas station that we worked for, we had to wear masks. It's just, there's no point in fighting it. So, yeah, I'm not walking around trying to, like, show people my face. It's a bummer that, like, I can't enunciate for children uh, and, you know, and help them read my lips. Assure someone. Yeah. Especially assholes like you and me. Now, hold on a second. stuff and smile and wink. I, I, I was trained as an actor, and I watched a lot of America's Next Top Model. So I feel like my, my schmizing technique, my ability to smile with just my eyes, is on point. When well, I, when I'm, I'm so ah. I, get the, I get the chinky eyes when I smile. Right. Gotcha. Yeah. That helps. I, <laughs> yeah. And I don't ever wear a mask, so that helps too. Right. I mean, if I was really concerned with it, if I was a speech therapist, I'd get something clear over my face. But you still have to wear a cloth mask, they say. So I don't know. I, I just want to do right. I don't want to piss anybody off when it comes to that crap. I'm not one of these. <clears throat> Great. One of these no mass Nevada guys, you know what I mean? I'm not, I'm not going to get after it like that. It sucks. It's, but. Come on, man. Don't be, don't be uh, throwing shade on my co-host now. What? Oh, no. Uh, you mean, uh, oh, I wanted to talk to you about this in case you uh, ever want to talk about grain. I'm doing a new podcast. Oh. Barley the News. I don't know if you can hear the sound drops that I'll I have. Hear it. Oh, okay, good. Yeah, because. One time, a, another one of my callers couldn't hear them, but uh, we're gonna use it. You're gonna you use bar. That's a funny thing, yeah. you know. You guys think you're making fun of me, and I love it. I put it all up. You know, show me the hole, <laughs> the actual <laughs> hole. <laughs> I swear to God, fun of me. I'm I'm smitten. I share it to everybody. Look, I'm being made fun of. I'm, I'm I must be relevant. That's not making fun though. I I I heard you say something, and I thought that's funny, and I just took two pieces reversed them, slowed it down, and it made me giggle my dick off. So I was like, and then, of course, y'all turned it into a promo. So, yeah, I mean, that you know, that that shit was amazing. Well, I hope the fact that it doesn't bother me doesn't dissuade people from doing it. No, no. I I mean, I made these sti- some a couple of these stingers for Jesse. I want Jesse's stuff to be better. So I'm actually going to send, I already sent him the link to this uh, person on Fiverr that made these. Because I know Ian likes that shit, right? He's like, Ian Bain, Ian Bain, like that weird radio stingers. How how much more popular we would be if we had his voice. Who, Ian's Bain? Ian's voice? Yeah. What do you mean? It's so cool. Oh, if he did like his radio voice? No, if we had his voice. Oh, yeah, I guess. I mean, that's, that's why you pay for stuff like this. You are listening to the PAA Podcast. Like, Ian's old school radio dude, he appreciates stuff like this. You go on Fiverr now, and these people just crank this shit out. They go in the studio, and they just... Like, all that stuff that I have in the beginning with the British lady, I didn't make that. The the Eastern European guy that's no clearly... Way. Huh? No way. You make that? That's not a real thing from England? No, no. I, I hired somebody on Fiverr the, for the first iteration, and, and then tipped her five bucks. So it cost me a total of 
$15. And then when I wanted it done again, I hit her up again. And I was like, I love what you did the first time, you know, do this. And she's right. like, I, she's like, I don't normally improv stuff. And then when I was about to finalize the script. She came back at me with a recording and I was like, that's it. Thank you. <laughs> well, my intro, I love my intro yeah. and all the combination of some graphics Natalie made for me and a friend gave me like a 75% off discount to do the production. Nice. Yeah. They got yeah. some good stuff on Fiverr. Like I, I like, I want to change it up every, every once in a while. Hey, uh, which meeting are you going to on Tuesday? I, I have to work. Oh, boo. So go to the, go to the, maybe you'll still get a zoom club invitation. No, no, you know, what I, I mean, you've noticed this. I walk in like I own the place at seven forty-five, eight o'clock. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Right. I, I, I shore up my interviews. We got Dean Heller coming, Charlie De La Paz. We got, um, uh, who else already promised to be on? Um, Oh, Erica Neely is running for school board. We're excited about that. I have a couple other governor candidates that said they were going to come on, but Dean Heller, Heller being the biggest. Uh, oh, I see myself now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Get rid of that. Get rid of that crap on, in the background. Um, you know, we already had, you know, Fred Simon, which I thought was really enlightening. So yeah. we got a lot of good stuff coming up really soon. We got, also got, um, who was it? Hold on. Oh, my gosh. I'm having a brain fart. I've always wanted to play with one of these. Yeah, you play with something <laughs> brainstorm. That There's guy. a. Here we go. Oh no way, that's sick. <laughs> oh, okay. oh, um, did you see that special by Mindy Robinson? I have seen previous iteration. A previous iteration, I believe, uh, it's the same thing with her and Nephi. Uh, well, I saw clips of that, but. This is different. This is two hours yeah. of solid, just like information. And, you know, and you could tear some of it apart. You know, uh, for example, just one example that I noticed, like, you know, she talks about, um, you know, how the guy needed glasses. Hey, uh, he was. You want to hear something funny? God. I have an intro for a conspiracy theory show that I never did with Carl Bunce. And I knew you were going to talk about conspiracies. So I actually have the intro. <laughs> My producer's laughing at your us sitting in the kitchen. Nice. Yeah, I, I should change that while this intro is running. There we go. Yeah, I never, I never got to use this. But uh, yeah, the. I, I like to be careful around October first because I know that there are people that. You, you don't want to deny that people got hurt. You know what I mean? Like no. real, real shit happened, but it gets, it gets muddy. Um, I mean, I, I wonder how many people really liked country music that much uh, <laughs> that Bro, all of a sudden started claiming they were there you, that weren't there. I used, to, I used to bartend events. I used to bartend all the UFC fights. I bartended everything from um, Black Eyed Peas to Metallica, from MGM to Mandalay Bay. I was with the service and I used to, you know, pick up a job once or twice a month. Yeah. I stopped doing it in about 2015, 2016. And if I was doing it, I know for sure I would have been one of the bartenders at that event. Right. Without it. And what's crazy is. So you were in the I culinary did, union on the steady extra or on the extra board? No, no. It was or a, um, conventions. Sorry. Yeah. It was a temp agency for concerts and basketball or for special events. They were called Millennium Staffing. I don't know if they're still in business. Oh, anymore. yeah, because that was off property, so it wouldn't have been covered by a union gi gimmick. It no, would have been, no. yeah. I used to put inside the arena at Mandalay Bay, inside the arena at MGM. Like I said, all the UFC stuff Fuck one it. day, I'll spend up everything. You... It was a really cool gig, and I'd hustle my ass off. I'd make a lot of money, bro, a lot of money. That's a shame, because when I was in the culinary union, I thought we only used culinary union people from banquets. Well, with all respect, I didn't need it but i am part of the bartenders union oh as well. okay gotcha oh yeah that's right because you don't have to join the union but yeah yeah like we got my poor card well to, to um i i had to get my poor card in order to work at trump hotel i used to work i used to bartend at trump oh, gotcha so that's why i got my poor card yeah but, uh, what was my point 
I don't know. Hey, I heard you talking about something about the shootings, though, and I was listening to the scanner that night. Um, someone was locked in their room in the New York, New York, and they couldn't get the son of a bitch to come out. And they were saying that he might have gotten hit by an errant bullet. You know what I mean? From the Mandalay Bay all the way over there. And that they no, couldn't... That- that's my point. You gotta watch the special, man. I have. I've, but, I've seen parts of it, but I'm just saying, like it, it's you know, it's a little bit much. About every, you know. First of all, she shows autopsy uh, evidence yeah. of people getting shot in the between the eyes. Now these people were running away from the Mandalay Bay. And Nephi said that there was a there's a, a shooting position. He knows them all because he used to shoot pigeons. So there's a good one right above the church. And I looked when I drove by that Catholic church, and sure as shit. You can get on, even his fat little dumpy ass could get up on that roof and, and take up a shooting yep. position up there. So, of course, there was more than one shooter. And you have a half a dozen people who have bullets lodged in the back of their head that entered in the front of their head. Now, they're coming from the roof. Also, she's got so much information about helicopters and pictures of helicopters that were hovering by Did, the man they paid during and i don't know yeah. you know okay so you have tourist helicopters going around and stuff like that but do they talk about the fact that the saudis own with i think microsoft the okay. uh four, the four seasons yeah, so this that. shit happens in the four seasons and the saudis aren't there but they're in town at the tropicana they normally stay at the Four Seasons, but the Saudi Air Force stays at the Tropicana, that this may have possibly been a an assassination attempt or some other convoluted bullshit that may have involved an assassination attempt, some other way to muddy the shit. But it's bizarre right. that the prince, the king or whatever, didn't stay in the same place he normally stays with his Air Force escort. And then, yeah, we had a fuckload of helicopters everywhere. Yeah, did you also know that the Saudis own the top, like, two or three floors of the Mandalay Bay? That's the Four Seasons. No, all, no. They the, are co-owners of <clears throat> Bill Gates of the... And, again, I, I'm i not saying this is 100% true. I don't know for sure. But this is what I'm looking up. This is what the Internet says. Yeah. That Bill Gates and the Saudis co-own the Four Seasons, yeah. which... For those who don't know, it's a, like a little mini hotel that's like in the shadow of the Mandalay Bay on the same property. Right, but they have their own accesses, I think, to those, don't right. they? Just it's, a, it's like separate. Yeah. I mean, to get up to those higher floors. I used to work at Mandalay Bay um, at the hotel. Center, And you have the Mandalay Bay. And between the two, yeah. it's like Ford War Casino when they were building city center and they refused to sell. Yeah. But besides that, Saudis... Oh, in the top three floors of the Mandalay Bay, you can't rent a room in the top three floors of the Mandalay Bay because, like, Saudi princes yeah. own that. And it's well, like the, the, right, the Air Force. That. The Air Force would stay there. That's what I was saying. His Air Force would stay there. So you know what's crazy? I used to work there, and I actually moved the... Uh, so I, I worked there at Mandalay Bay at the hotel tower, now the Delano. But I've also done sign work there. I moved the House of Blues sign from one elevation to another. You know, big crane work and shit. Isn't that so, with the M's <coughs> uh, no, the House of Blues is at Mandalay Bay. No, no, the big, big sign company. What's the big, big sign company here in Vegas? Well, there's Yesco, there's Vision, yes. and there's uh, oh, yeah. High Impact. Well, I was with uh, Vision when we moved it, but uh, yeah, we we moved it from one elevation to another. But accessing that parking garage from the fourth floor or whatever, there's just a pony wall that takes you over onto the roof. From that rooftop, you can go all the way to the front of the building and look out over that festival area. From and not, I'm you know I'm saying that there's also they, I know there's places in the bushes you can lay down, but elevated up there too. I mean, a blanket the right. same color as the roof, and you're hidden. Right. Yeah, a gray blanket or whatever color that cement is. Yeah. Because I, I saw videos of people running across the uh, roof of like the back of the Tropicana. Yeah. You know, that could be somebody running because they're scared and they found themselves there because they were on a parking garage and they just went the other direction they found. Or it could be another, sh- you know, who knows? Well, but engineers and security like to, um, if you saw somebody running along the, the top of the Tropicana, it could be, you know, an electrician, an air conditioning guy, a heating guy, or a security yeah. guy that's out for a smoke. You know what I mean? No. Uh, it looked like a 25-year-old person 
with wearing all black running for their life, whether yeah. that's because they're running for their life because they're going to get caught or they're running for their life because they're afraid they're going to get killed. Yeah. But also they're talking about all the 911 calls coming from, you know, they, they have video of people at Bellagio at midnight, which is over an hour after the dude took his own life, supposedly. Yeah. And you hear machine gun fire ringing through the Bellagio. You have a dozen 911 calls and people sheltering in place at the Bellagio at 12.02 a.m. October 2nd. And nobody, I mean, if somebody's shooting a machine gun inside the Bellagio, that should make news, even if it's happening at the same time as somebody else getting killed. You know what I mean? Like, you know, if there's two hurricanes, we don't just cover one of them. Yeah. Yeah. And, yeah. Even if it's not coordinated. Because I don't know what's for sure and what's not, but it's really super duper interesting. And even if Mindy Robinson is totally full of it, which I don't think she's totally full of it, but even if she was, the stuff she's showing is real radar, you know, uh, coverage. It's real cell phone events. It's real um, interviews that happened on mainstream media before anybody may have gotten a message to not talk about or whatever the case may be. Planet Hollywood, New York, New York, all these places, the Flamingo, Caesars Palace, Bellagio, all had sh reported shootings and people saying they know for sure people were shooting up the these places. And, you know, and I, the I'm not saying what happened. I'm saying, why don't we know any of this stuff it was like the biggest shooting in american history or you, something. Uh, do you ever see the video where the fbi uh agent whispers in lombardo's ear we're not going to talk about that dude that and what the fuck the, doesn't he, i mean they talk about this dude but that is the dude that got has my attention the most he is standing there at every news conference staring yeah. down whoever's speaking I know that I know that Mindy and and Nephi have an agenda against Joe Lombardo, and I'm okay with that. Um, I'm but I'm I mean not, that that shit is blatant, man. It's in your face. Content. Yeah. You know, and people have said, "Oh, does she have a you know hard on for Joe Lombardo?" And you know, I guess she does. You and know, that's but, kind of the reason. Right, and I'm not. And notice, I didn't even bring up Joe Lombardo's name. I'm not saying he's good guy or a bad. Guy. I'm just saying the no, thing he, really. But he's, in, He's the guy that stood there and got whispered in his ear by the FBI agent. And I mean, he's just, he's a, he's a puppet. A puppet. It's a greasy puppet. You know what I mean? Well, I don't know. I mean, even, you know, and I hate to say it, but even like say Dean Heller, just seeing him up there with that FBI agent and Sisolak and Lombardo, it's, that whole thing is really curious. Let's put it that way. Uh, yeah, I mean, I guess there's a way of showing authority and having everybody that's supposed to be in charge at a time like that in the, on, in the same room, on the same page. But, yeah, I mean, they they all just got right in line, didn't they? <laughs> I don't even know if we're supposed to be talking about this. You know, I start finding stuff out, you know, and I start getting red-pilled more and more the more I find out. And number one, you know, you ever wonder why so many conservative podcasters – are conspiracy theorists, whether you're talking about Ben Shapiro or Alex Jones or uh, whoever, Glenn Beck, whatever. All these people, after being in this business for a couple of years, turn into conspiracy theorists. And now I'm afraid that I'm going to start getting lumped in with that because I'm just, you know, trying to keep my ear to the ground so I have material for my podcast. And the more I find out, the scarier and scarier it is and the more and more these nefarious explanations make sense whether you're talking about Carrie Ann Buck or you're talking about Joe Lombardo you're talking about you know the Rockefellers you know and the New World Order yeah the, well that, when people get upset because you're just asking questions I mean I, I don't I haven't ascribed malice to anyone in, in this whole thing, but I want to know why there's an FBI agent whispering in your ear Joe Lombardo that's all you know I mean like whispering we're not, we're not going to talk about that like are you a chump? Are you a punk? Like you let you let FBI guys push a sheriff around because you're a, you're a you're an out west no sheriff. Name, some no name FBI agent is yeah. eyeballing the governor of Nevada and the sheriff of Nevada, as in step out of line and we're gonna drop the hammer. You know, it looks like John Kreese over there. Yeah, yeah. So we have questions because this is our town and we're allowed to ask questions. It's not a conspiracy theory. 
But, uh, you know, weird shit happens. And I don't think it gets any clearer the further away it gets. So we had a lot of questions right away, and everybody said, shut up. I mean, I even have questions about things like Jason Aldean. I found out his name isn't Jason Aldean. Uh, It's Jason Williams. His middle name is A-L-D-I-N-E. He pulled a, you know, oh, I can't perform anymore. And then the next weekend, Saturday Night Live said, hey, we got an opening. And all of a sudden, Jason Aldean shook off the I can't perform anymore, rented some other equipment because all his shit was still sitting over at the, the festival grounds locked up and, and he, and he bravely got out there on SNL and fucking, uh, you know, did what the fuck he's supposed to do. <laughs> well, I, and, you know, and then you wonder, you know, I hate to get conspiracy theory on it, but you know, people are saying they heard shots coming from the stage, from behind the stage, the way it all went down and everybody was running away and they kept singing for a little while longer. And then they didn't run. They didn't like, I don't know. The whole thing is really weird. And you got to remember, of course, you know, you talk about multiple guns, but then you got to consider Echo. You can consider. There were people um, immediately after this that were analyzing the sounds and stuff like that uh, to try and determine where it comes from, because we all know buildings echo and stuff like that. So. Right. Right. And that, uh, you know, so it's a really hard thing to know what's real, what's conspiracy, what is inarguable and what is arguable. Well, I think what everyone can agree on is if you have an event happening at one spot and let's say it goes pop, 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 that the report coming back off the buildings would have that same rhythm in some way. Uh, and right. clearly that's not the case in any of these audio recordings. That Uber driver. Yeah. That Uber driver was right underneath the man, like literally right underneath the window. Yep. And you hear like pop, 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 pop. Like from really far away. Right. And then you hear doom, doom, doom. Like the dude is on top of the dude's car. Like, like what? You know, there was no gun. There was no echo. There was no nothing. And you right. hear automatic machine gun fire. And, and just a, just guy, above that valet area is the area I'm talking about that you can access from the employee and customer parking garage. You just go up to the correct floor. And anybody that works there knows that shit because you've stood up there to smoke a cigarette or something and gone, holy shit, I can make it to the front of the building from here. Right. So, I mean, it's just how people access shit to get to the ACs and things like that. And you can get there. And then, yeah, doom, 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 fucking from right there. It's a really good elevation. Or that area beside where there's a giant uh, uh, dirt berm where that stupid second Ferris wheel is supposed to never happen. Exactly. That's, yeah, that's also an area that that, could, that shit could have been going on from. But I don't even know about this stuff. I'm just sharing with you the interest I have in the video that I just saw. I would like to talk about something I do know about. What's that? All right. You know, like, I hate when Biden or Clinton or any of these people alienate half of the country with some of their accusations. And now I'm here to be a total hypocrite. All right. I've had it. All these liberals or more specifically progressives and voting and the 33 percent of people who seem to think joe biden's doing a great job and kamala harris we got to keep doing what we've been doing and the time to do that is now as the country falls apart in flames around her and meanwhile my point is you got all these people you got the mask police you got the people who are genuinely living in fear you got the people who want to close down businesses and mask our children and then you go, and then my producer gets COVID, so I run up to CVS to grab some zinc. No zinc on the shelves. Right. I go to Albertsons. I go to Walgreens. Zinc is sold out. Now, stop giving me this crap about how we all need to wear masks to save lives when now, when people are catching COVID left and right, Nobody can get zinc, which is the singular thing that stops the replication of the virus inside your body. And if I want to get you kicked off of YouTube, I mention the delivery systems to get the zinc to be inside the cell. And it's easier to get those delivery systems that are so taboo to talk about than it is to get zinc, which yeah. costs a total of a penny per pill. And why? We don't have zinc being delivered to houses literally every single house should have gotten a hundred zinc pills is there a is there a food that has a lot of zinc in it i don't know 
I'm just saying, all these people who are screaming bloody murder over vaccines and boosters and masks that don't work, the singular element that will help us recover from COVID is the singular element that stops the replication of the virus is the singular thing that you can't get at any store. And nobody's talking about it. They're still talking about tests. What the hell do we need a test for? No matter whether you're positive or negative, you're told to go home for five days in quarantine. Who's getting every single one of these tests is made in China releases a virus. Then we got to buy tests from China and we got to do all this stuff from China and we got to get all these people super duper rich. But meanwhile, I want to treat the damn virus and the only thing to treat it with is zinc and all the shelves are bare. And nobody's talking about how many people are dying because they can't get zinc. But we're going to talk about how many people are dying because you, or not you apparently, but because I won't wear a mask when I walk into Walmart. I'm killing grandma, but our supply chain and our zinc. And you know what? It's these same damn progressives who are buying 400 rolls of toilet paper and every <laughs> single zinc bottle on the shelves. So all these idiots have a cupboard full of zinc life-saving medicine and they're the same ones who are gonna go on to my facebook and call me a grandma killer yeah i've had it with the hypocrisy and these are the people who are enabling it and i'm sorry i'm calling out everyone who voted democrat who still says they're going to vote democrat in 2022 so Maybe those it coming in 2020 i did so there's that percentage of people that i mean you can just see them coming a mile away, right? They, they, they still love the current administration and they're willing to capitulate. I, I don't worry about those people because they carry the flag. I worry about the people that are sneaking in, you know, pretending the, the pretenders, the, 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 the new Republicans that are, uh, bringing that stuff into the Republican party that used to be Democrats. Fascism by using fascist tools. Yeah. Yeah, the well, the ones that call what is it? The de, there's a democratic tactic. Uh, Saul Alinsky accuse them of what you do. Right. Uh, you know, never, never you lose the opportunity. You huh? and your bestie know all about the uh, rules to radicals. Yeah, well, I like to read the enemy's stuff. You know what I'm saying? Uh, dark, uh, dark psychology. Quizzed her about it. Yeah, who? Your little progressive bestie. Which one? Sarah Cirillo. Oh. Yeah. So, I mean, yeah, we all got to read each other's stuff if you want to, you know, know what everybody's up to. But but she, they're constantly these these uh, rhino folks are constantly the ones that are talking about unity. Like they really want us to just ignore the fact that they're sneaking in, you know, and want to take over. It's just unity, guys. Unity. It's bizarre. Well, I was calling for unity last July before <laughs> the hit the fan. <coughs> for unity then especially say jack and carrie ann buck i was begging them for unity i was begging them let's just have a real let let everybody in and have a real vote no and let's all work together yeah there's there's no such thing i mean it's always somebody's trying to you know the ones that are screaming for unity the ones that say accountability unity through accountability you go oh, okay you know like like michael's new slogan Right. But it, we've, we've, it's, it's been this way since I just found an old video. I don't know if you saw it from 2008, uh, my I wife on CNN, but it, it goes along with a couple of others that I found. And one of them, like I, I was, I became cynical. I could tell the day that I became cynical. I was, I was at the central committee meeting, uh, 17 July, 2008. And, uh, dude, I was, dude, I was chewing gum. I cut a heel promo. I told everybody how good looking I was twice that, that I was, bro, I was over it. You could tell, like I was chewing gum and smiling like, fuck this. Like, so yeah, I mean, I knew right away there's, there's no unity. There's just a show. All right. Well, I really appreciate letting me come on since I'm not, I really, I, I almost fell down laughing when you said Johnny will be on any show but his own. <laughs> <laughs> that was a good one. Hey, man, I mean, you, you got them all, right? It's, that's the thing. You have open invites to everybody, so everybody that, you know, has a show, I mean. Well, I appreciate it, and you know what? You know, 
back in the day when I used to watch people show, I was like, I wish I could be on that show and explain what is really going on. Well, yeah. have the opportunity. How could I turn down the uh, invitation? Yeah, absolutely. I know um, Ian, Ian, won't, Ian won't have me on his show anymore. But <laughs> Oh, dude, let me show oh, you something no. real quick. Oh, no, you started that fight. Don't you dare. You can tease Ian all you want, but you're the one who threw a hissy fit. I threw a hissy fit? They shit canned my episode. Never throw away my content. With the sound. It doesn't matter. What? Oh, I'm going to start doing interviews. That's what I was going to show you. I'm going to start doing interviews. Let's see. There. Right there. I'm going to make people stand in that corner. <laughs> so that they can... Here. Nice logo. It's in a whole different part of the studio, so I can just have people stand over there, and and I'll interview them while they stand in the corner. <laughs> and I made it black and white. That's hot. Yeah, it's ridiculous. I like to play with the toys. All right, I'm gonna I'm gonna wrap up and yeah. uh, get out of here. I'll hit my outro. I'm gonna be back in two weeks, and we're gonna have back to back into. I mean, I got so many people lined up to interview. We're gonna be doing at least two a week. So nice. After your show on Saturdays and then Sunday afternoons. Yeah, you're going to be busy as shit before filing. And then once filing happens, we can separate the wheat from the chaff and really re-interview the people that, that make it past, you know, that actually and, file. Right. And what I'm looking forward to is every time I have somebody to interview, once we get through their life story, like Tony Lane, say, or uh, whoever else I've interviewed already, you know, or Fred Simon. Now they could just come on the show and we could talk about events because my audience knows who they are already. So then we could just jump right into the events. We could uh, have them on for a half hour or we could have them on for two hours, you know, depending on how it goes. Yeah. Don't feel too obligated to do everybody's origin story. Some of these people actually have a, a background. But, yeah, like some of the guys that you've been interviewing, there's there's nothing there. Jenna Waltho has no... Right. I, I well, my if... producer has made me promise to get through the whole kindergarten through college within the first 10 minutes i got in trouble because they're looking at the clock and we're 35 minutes in and we're still on 10th grade see that's so, the problem with veterans in politics and spider-man they always start with the origin story and it's just it's better to just skip right to the to the bad guys all right well, i'm gonna hit uh, i'm gonna try to combine it right I'm on let you finish up your thing thanks so much man and i'm loving the show right on man all yeah right. let's here we'll just we'll just hit a few of the fun toys while we're i just roasted the roaster and um, so I still roast. You and so me. I still or roast do I end you? That way. I'm that guy. So I still roast. Um, I roast probably every other I don't end anybody. And I uh, roast a pretty significant amount. Anyways. There you go. Throw a little Sherman on the back end of it. That's it. Uh, Jesus Christ. Hour and 34 minutes. And you got a little uh, a, a Johnny Brew show segment in there i'm going to upload the other video of me cutting that heel promo promo at the central committee when i get a minute to do it um but thanks for watching and uh you know click like or don't or all the things uh to want a crab and mike colian metaphorically suck my dick tell jim small i said that uh his uh organization is a fucking joke if he thinks that attendance at either meeting determines which is the real GOP. He's made his group a fucking joke just by even intimating that. And I made all of this up. I never, I don't know if Jim said that. But if he did, he's a bitch. To one on Mike, tell him I said so. What up? We out of here? Yeah, we had it. You had it. Thanks for watching. <laughs>